Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a quick and easy method on how to apply a phosphate finish to your hood hinges. Uh, very similar to what the factory would have done in um, older vintage cars. So we're going to skip all the BS and we're going to get right to it. These hinges here are out of a 1970 Ford F-250. The very first thing you're going to need to do is get them cleaned up and ready to soak. So the one on the left is one that has not been cleaned or blasted and the one on the right is. So what I've done with this is uh, I've, I've just simply put it in my blaster and blasted it. You do not have to get it 100% perfect and rust free. You can see I've still got um, a little bit of rust there. There's gonna be a little bit of rust in the spring. For the material we are using today, that is A-OK -okay because what's going to happen is the phosphoric acid in it is going to clean up the rest of that rust. So let's go on to the next step. For materials needed, you're going to need a tote that is large enough to hold uh, the hinges or whatever you're trying to dip. You'll also need the dipping agent itself, which is Master Coat Metal Prep and Rust Remover. This is a unique formulation because it includes a detergent, phosphoric acid, and zinc phosphate. So the phosphoric acid is going to mediate the reaction with the zinc phosphate and actually phosphatize the metal. That means it's going to be depositing a layer of zinc phosphate on the metal and give you a nice gray phosphate finish. And finally, you're going to need some automatic transmission fluid or another type of lightweight oil that you can use to coat the metal afterwards to give it some protection from re-rusting. I would recommend removing the spring from the hinge because it will make the hinge have less height to it, which will require less volume to completely immerse the spring. So the way I remove the spring from the hinge is to simply put the hinge in a bench vise, wrap a couple layers of wire around the spring, and let's see if I can do this with one hand. Pull back on the wire and pop the spring out. With that out of the way, now we're going to start adding the metal prep to the pan. And I have five gallons of this on hand. I bought this from their website, by the way, which is nomorerust.com. And it does cost about 40 bucks a gallon, but the nice part about it is you can use it. It is reusable. So you can use this to dip other stuff. You can use it to wipe down metal, to coat things. Um, so it will go a long ways for you, even beyond this. So I'm gonna keep adding a little bit to here. This does have quite well, it doesn't have a lot. It has a little bit of fumes, so I would not do this in your house. I would do it out in your shop or outside or something. I'm gonna add more to this until this is completely covered, and then we'll talk about what happens next. So I've now got four gallons of material in here. That is what it was going to require. I didn't quite get that little guy covered, but I didn't wanna add another gallon just for that. What we have going on here is the hinge is sitting inside there. We can see some bubbling action through there as the acid is reacting with the metal. Um, and so that is going to completely dissolve any of that leftover rust that I showed you earlier. One word of precaution is you couldn't see me doing it, but I was wearing some nitrile gloves when adding this because it, it can sting your hands a little bit if you get it if it sets on there too long so use the appropriate safety precautions here the other thing is you can fold your hinge up if that means it will fit in a smaller container i could not put this in a five gallon bucket because this is a really big hinge it's a truck hinge it's going to be almost twice the size of your standard car hinge. Um, if you're just doing a car hinge, it's probably going to use a lot less material because you can use a smaller container. 
The other thing is you do not want your part to only be half submerged and thinking that you will flip it over later because what's going to happen is it's going to leave a line right along the part where it was parkerized and when you flip it over it might have a slightly different phosphate finish on the other half and so therefore on your part you would see a line going right down the center uh, from the two different uh, sessions you're doing where you flipped it. So that is why I want this to be completely submersed in here. So the warmer this is, the better. In some of the common parkerizing videos you might see or methods, they actually do advise to heat the material to very hot um, in a stainless steel pan. Then you have to add some steel wool to it and let it cook for, I think, 10 or 15 minutes or something. You don't have to do any of that with this because all you simply have to do is add the material here, the metal prep, put the part in there, and then soak it for a couple hours to overnight. This here is uh, an infrared paint curing lamp I use, but you can turn uh, a lamp on like this if you got it, and it will really heat that uh, solution up too. You just want to make sure that it does not melt your plastic or something like this. So that's the nice thing about the system. It doesn't require heat to still phosphatize the metal. So I'm going to let it sit here for a couple hours. I'm going to come back and check on it and see what we're, see how it's going. Here we are about one hour into it and you can see that most of the rust that was still left on this is almost entirely gone. Just a little bit right there and a little bit in that spot there. But you can also see how this has taken on the gray aluminum phosphate finish so we're just going to let this keep on going until all that rust is gone and this entire thing is phosphatized it's now been two and a half hours so let's take a look and see how this is turning out you can see right here that the uh, that's the spring right there is still bubbling and fizzing let's see what's going on with it Look how nice that looks. The spring. Whoops, a daisy. The spring was completely rusty and stuff inside because I couldn't get that part blasted. And now, look how nice that is. Looks brand new. Let's check this out. Here you can kind of see the little line I was telling you about. See how there's that little, on the right there, let it focus. There's a slight dark line. That's because I actually um, let that part sit up so I could have this other part be submerged. But if we just take our hinge, all the rust is gone and it's got a nice dark gray phosphate finish on it. So I think I'm going to remove it now. So the next step I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a light spray down with water to rinse off all this excess uh, metal prep. And then right after we wash it down with water, I'm going to dry it off with a heat gun. Now the next thing you want to do is get some ATF on a rag and wipe it in there. And I like ATF just because it's a lightweight oil. After you rinse this off with water, it will get a little bit of very, flash, uh, very fast flash rust on it. That's going to give it a slight um, orangish tint or golden tint in some spots. If you don't want that, then don't rinse it off with water. However, the problem is you'll have a lot of the um, metal prep on here to wipe off and that can leave a white film which can be unsightly i don't really mind this the little golden flash rust too badly because as long as you get uh, the oil on there real quick it'll make it look kind of a nice uh, shiny finish like that and then you don't really see it it also works nice to use a foam brush and kind of get in there and Get your transmission fluid everywhere. 
And if there's certain areas that you can't get to, then just hold the, hold the part over your bowl of transmission fluid and just pour the fluid over it and let it run back into the bowl to get it nice and coated. And then you can actually use, um, well, you could use another brush to kind of wipe up the excess or you could just go over it with a paper towel. Now what I'm doing is giving it a little bake underneath my infrared curing lamp. This gets it nice and hot, gets the oil worked into the metal. This metal feels like it's probably about 100 or 110 degrees right now. Um, it's hot, but not too hot to touch. An extra bonus to treating it with all this oil is look how nice that goes up and down now. This was really stiff before I started, but this gets all that oil worked in there and it gives you real smooth function. And there you have it. I might let it sit upright for a couple days or something to finish letting the oil and the excess drip off. Probably throw it in a plastic bag when I'm done so it doesn't get a bunch of dirt all over it. But here's what you started with. And this is what we finished with. So hopefully this was useful. If you got any questions, post them in the comments below. I have a link for where you can get the metal prep at nomorerust.com uh, through Mastercoat. So thanks for watching. Good luck on your restorations.